thank you very much for everything you got, you've done with us over the years in launching this conference. It's been great working with Eddie, and I'm delighted that we're now doing the Leadership Awards. Uh, Absolutely, our, yeah, our fantastic. Uh, one of the things, can you, I haven't got a microphone here. Yeah, speak. Yeah, one of the things that I think is really encouraging is uh, the political economic conditions in the region at present are as challenging as I've ever seen them. And yet the engagement with this event has not gone down. In fact, it's gone up. So I think if the hospitality industry, the hospitality industry can inspire this kind of engagement at one of the most demanding points in the cycle, it gives you confidence for the future and certainly for the great event we're looking for for 2020 and beyond with the expo and everything that's going to happen. So I'd like to thank everybody here, particularly our honoured guest, His Highness, for the tremendous support that he and you have provided to AHIC and Benchamead over more than 12 years. Thank you, Eddie. And this conference is all about announcing deals as well. So we'd like just to announce a couple of deals that I've just seen come through on my phone. And uh, one is congratulations to the Wyndham Hotel Group for um, a couple of deals, one in Ethiopia, one owner, three hotels, roughly 400 rooms, the Wyndham Addis Ababa, a trip by Wyndham in Addis Ababa and the Wyndham Garden Lagono. They've also done a deal in Iraq, uh, one owner, two hotels, 465 uh, rooms, the, Rad the Ramada Plaza Naraf and the Hotel and Suites Naraf. And they've also done a deal. This has all been signed at this conference, which is uh, great news, a hotel in Oman as well. It's one owner, two hotels, 290 units, and those are Ramada hotels. So many congratulations to Wyndham for doing those two deals. And I don't know if you saw in the news feed that just came through, but we also have the HNA, HNA uh, Tourism Group, who just entered into an agreement with Carlson Hospitality Group for the acquisition of Carlson Hotels. So that's uh, terribly exciting that they were able to announce uh, that deal here along with Wyndham as well. So we like doing that, don't we? We do. Okay. Jolly good. And now it gives us great pleasure to do the awards. We've got uh, the Leadership Award, our annual Leadership Award, which we've been doing for the last 12 years, and also a special, special recognition award that we're also doing. So I would first like to uh, bring to the stage someone who has been a great supporter of our event over the years. Uh, when I first went to, we went to meet him 12 years ago, he said, this is an event that we need to support. We need to get the industry together. And he has been a great conduit of that. And I'm delighted to introduce and bring to the table our patron, His Highness, Sheikh Ahmed bin Saeed Al Maktoum, Chairman of Dubai Airport and President of the Emirates Airport Group. So uh, Sheikh Ahmed, thank you for joining us. Thank you for everything you've done for us over the years. Thank you. Right, now we're just, I'm going to say a few words about our first um, award winner. And I'm delighted to um, announce our first award, which is Outstanding Service to the Industry. And that is going to the founder and former managing director of Emirates Academy, Ron Hilbert. And uh, Ron, you have been such a great supporter of ours over the years. <clears throat> when we first uh, launched this event 12 years ago, uh, you said, as did Sheikh Ahmed, yes, this is something we need to be doing. We need to uh, get together as a conference like this. Uh, he's also been a great supporter of ours for our advisory boards, bringing the students here and uh, helping us out with this event over the years. But just a little bit about uh, Ron Hilbert. He, he was, uh, he's lived and breathed hotels all his life, human resources at Hilton, Hyatt, and Jumeirah, and he was here in the days when it was the Chicago Beach Hotel. Many of you in this industry have been hired, trained, advised, educated by Ron Hilbert. He was one of the founding fathers, or is the founding father, of Emirates Academy, alongside Gerald Lawless, with support from the government and, uh, and Jumeirah. He started with 15 students exactly 15 years ago. They're celebrating their 15th year this year. 
And uh, I think we've got one student actually in the audience. Rami Mukazel is Rami in the audience uh, from Golden Tulip. He was one of the first in that group that went through. Today they have 400 students graduating. And, uh, and what's nice about this institution, it's the only domestic homegrown hospitality school in the region. And it's certainly now going global. It's going international, thanks to all your efforts and what you've done uh, for the industry. So a true passionate, a true industry leader, someone who is absolutely core to our industry. He's essential to what we do as investors, developers. Uh, Ron, thank you for all you've done. And uh, if you could all show your appreciation to Ron Hilvert, and many, many congratulations on receiving this award. Well done, Ron. And now for our second award, our Leadership Award. And uh, our Leadership Award this year goes to the CEO of Roya International, Ahmed Ramdan. So a little bit uh, about Ahmed Ramdan. So why honor Mr. Ramdan? What is so special about his story. In one sentence, Ahmed Ramdan is an exceptional man, an Emirati who always knew exactly what he wanted to be, a pioneer professional in the hospitality industry. Ahmed is a true first, an Emirati who dared to take risk by working in a very new industry, long before anyone would imagine what was going to transpire in Dubai and the region. A role model for young Emiratis and other young people deciding on a career in hospitality, he made that choice at a time when there was no hotels in the UAE. He was there from the beginning. Shortly after his very young country had been formed, a then very young Ahmed decided he wanted to defy tradition and go into the hospitality, not engineering, not law, not medicine, but the hospitality industry. From the start of his career in 1980, Ahmed from then until now was and is the only Emirati to rise through the ranks of the international hotel chains to the top. In 1998, he again proved he was a visionary anticipating the boom in tourism in hospitality in the GCC. He left the security of working for an international management company and went and started up his own private consultancy practice, Roya International. Many of the iconic properties in the OAE, um, of course, have been developed through Roya and his company. Considering the importance of tourism and hospitality to the economy of Dubai and the UAE, this is a rich story of a true vision and love for the industry. Ahmed once said his father did not speak to him for two years when he decided to join the hospitality industry instead of becoming a doctor or an engineer, devoted to the cause of emeritization. Please show your appreciation to this wonderful man, Ahmed Ramdan, for receiving this year's Outstanding Achievement Award. Thank you very much. Um, this is such an honor f for me um, to be recognized in this way. I, until four months ago, I lived in this country for 18 years and came here 38 years ago to hire the first 500 people for the Dubai International Hotel. And there's a young man in the front row here with silver hair who was in that opening team. Uh, Gerald Lawless, and uh, Dubai is part of me, and to come back after four months is wonderful. 
I was reading in the program notes here of AHIC that uh, I'm being recognized for a lifetime dedicated to the development of young people and the training of young people. I like those words, but the word lifetime normally appears in obituaries, so I can assure you that I have several more years to go. And in the program it also said that I have a few minutes, and I was told five minutes because the attention span of this group is only five minutes, um, that I could just pass on a few comments about my career in human resources and what it means to me and what it means uh, in, a, in this professional life. I've been so very lucky. Can you imagine a life that's dedicated to being, developing, educating, mentoring young people? What a wonderful opportunity I had. And there are so many people I'd like to thank for that, but four companies, and I'll spend one minute on each company, gave me that opportunity. The first was a British company called Trust House Forte Hotels, THF, who took me in when I graduated from Lausanne. And at the age of 25 years old, they appointed me Director of Manpower Development of the company, which at the time I thought was a mistake. But anyway, it worked out okay, and I was responsible for the management in the 600 or the 300 hotels and the 800 or so management in that company. And that appointment, where I also managed the management training program, really started my obsession in developing young people because I thought, if I can succeed at this age, then many, many others can. In my next company in Hyatt, I started the corporate management training program, which has produced and is still in existence and has produced hundreds and hundreds of GMs and executives. And David Udell, the president of Asia, contacted me a couple of days ago and said, Ron, it's 32 years ago today at Cornell. And Xavier Destribatsa Kempinski also 32 years ago at Lausanne, etc. And I'm often asked, why is it that that program was so successful? I think it's because uh, we recruited well, but we made the program very, very personal. You know, we looked after these young people and guided them and helped them and mentored them, and we delivered to them what we promised we would deliver on the basis that they would also deliver. And I'm of the old school that says that human resources is not about technology, as it is so often today, it's about people and getting to know people and really helping people. Then I came to Jumeirah where Gerald gave me this wonderful opportunity 18 years ago to help him start this fantastic company. I am so privileged that I was part of that journey. And then a day 16 years ago that I will never forget when Gerald came to me and said, Ron, I've just come from His Highness's office. And if you remember that concept paper you wrote for a college for this country, well, His Highness has agreed it. He's given us the land and he asked me two simple questions. Does Jamira want to do it? And do you have anybody to manage it? And of course he said, it's His Highness. So I said yes to the first question. And the second question, good luck, Ron. So the rest is history, as they say. And I guess I was bound to fall into education at some point. It wasn't always an easy journey, but I'm very proud of what we've achieved at the Emirates Academy. I know there's a number of my former colleagues here in the room. Thank you so much. I wouldn't be standing here if it weren't for you. And I'm a great believer also that colleges must be judged. Colleges in the professional world can only be judged on the success of their graduates. I said to the opening team 16 years ago, we will be judged 20 years from today when we see our graduates. And in the last two days that I've been here, Rami Mukazel, VP of Louvre Hotels, Shadi Hassan, Head of Hospitality Planning at Miras, Kai Shukovsky, Ajman Kempinski GM, the youngest GM in the history of Kempinski. So we are well on the right path. And finally, a few months ago, I got the opportunity to do it all over again in Asia uh, with Dusitani, um, a wonderful college which is a, a complete integration of a hotel school, again with Lausanne, with the Dusit D2 brand, which will open towards the end of next year. It wasn't easy leaving Dubai, this wonderful place, after 18 years, but my, my lovely Filipino wife, Rona, and our three children supported me and agreed to go back to their home country where we've settled very well. Again, I'd like to end by saying that this is an enormous privilege for me. Um, it's nearly 50 years now, but my motivation to succeed in Manila is the same as it was when I came into this industry. There are thousands of tremendous human resource educators, academics, working almost anonymously in the world to help young people enter this wonderful industry of ours. 
and I also accept this on behalf of them. I'd like to thank you very much, and I wish everybody well. Thank you very much. Please take a seat. I tell you what my first question is going to be is, and Jonathan mentioned this, that decision, however many years, decades ago, to go into the hospitality industry, from what I understand, it's not an easy decision or career choice for a, a, a bright, aspiring Emirati to make today, but back then, very difficult. How did you make the decision, and then how did you follow through with it? Well, I'm a non-conformist person by nature. So everybody was going in a different industry, and I thought nobody been in this industry, so I decided to move to hospitality section. So but it, I guess all of us, we have a rebellious streak when we're young, and we're rebellious for maybe half a day, and then we conform. But you saw it through. So what was the, the career path? How did you go from uh, a non-conformist idea into building a career like that? What was the, the key moment, the breakthrough moment? Uh, hard working and not giving up. Uh, among everybody, they were all expat, foreigners. I was feeling a bit lonely, but that, that I took it as a challenge to work and learn and work and learn. And I continued uh, learning from foreigners, respecting them, learning more, working harder, and continue. Yeah. And then, of course, back, it was 1998, wasn't it, that you set up Roya? Roya that was yeah. the year I moved to, to the UAE, so yeah. nearly 20 years ago. What was it you saw then that made you think, OK, I can be more than a hotelier, I can be a, an entrepreneur as well? Well, like, like Jonathan says, the, the country was growing. Dubai, in particular, was going through the major uh, growth in tourism and travel. And uh, working after nearly 20 years with international operator, I found there is a gap in the market where uh, the owners, the investors need a bit of an advice and needs a bit of a guidance because before the relation was directly between international operator and uh, owners, uh, there were misunderstanding or there were <laughs> few challenges was there. So I thought it was the right time to establish a first uh, hospitality company in Dubai. It's yeah. an, in, in some ways invented the, the asset management industry in this region. Indeed, at the, the beginning we were focusing on operator negotiations and doing some hotel development. As a year ago, we added uh, more and more um, services to the organization. And uh, <clears throat> by five years after Open, I think we completed our four sectors, which was asset management, which was again new to this part of the world. There was a challenge to the, some owners. They, they said, we have an operator. Why do we need asset manager or why we need someone else to attend? Good question. Yeah, that was a typical question. And, and what was the answer? The answer is that sometime, at that time, we told them that we can be your insurance or we can be bounce back idea with you or making sure that operators are uh, achieving their budget or they're looking after your asset well and so on and so forth. So finally, we convinced a few of them, and, I, and then it rolled on. So, so what, of course, one of the challenges was building, building a business, a successful business, and you did that. One statistic I read, and I had to do a double take, was it $44 billion of assets you've helped to manage over the years? It's an ext or $55 billion. $55 billion 55. is the, <coughs> the total asset we are managing it across. Which is the, it's a, across a, the region. It's not only in Dubai. It's an extraordinary number. Yeah, that's a total asset, yes. And, and I know that obviously the numbers are important to you. you. You run a business. But I know something else that's important to you, and it, and it dovetails well with Ron's story, is promoting people within the industry, particularly Emiratis, not just Emiratis, but particularly Emiratis. What are the challenges you face in doing that, and how do you overcome them? Well, I enjoy to promote people. I enjoy to grow people. I enjoy to groom people. Um, I started with a, with a non emiratis earlier stage of my career. And soon after I became a general manager, I have a passion of why not enough UAE. Like I said, I was very lonely, so I worked <laughs> on <laughs> uh, finding a UAE nationals and those who are interested in hotel. But we always face the challenge, but things are getting bigger, better and better. Number are growing, but not as much as we would like to really see still the ratios exceptionally low ratio of UAE national to, to non-nationals in uh, hospitality I industry. I was talking with, um, with Alex Kiriakidis about this yesterday at Marriott, who's the president for a, a very big region, 
And he says, well, they've, they've launched a management program so that it becomes a, a, a management career rather than necessarily having to start at the bottom. Because they're great, those stories, aren't they, starting at the bottom in the kitchen, washing pots. But actually, it doesn't have to be like that. This industry is, is maturing, isn't it? So making it attractive to young graduates. This is one of the challenges we have with the UE young generation. They think that they have to go and wash the dish or they have to go and work in a bar. And uh, my role or my team's role or all of our role is to explain to them or educate them that it's not necessary you have to go and work in a bar or wash the dish. There are many sections within the hotel. You can work in an accounting department, you can work in engineering, in HR, which is not involved in the type of things. Uh, the, the image of hotel in particular in the Gulf is still is related to alcohol and everything in the past, so there was certain reservation. But as the industry is growing and people are becoming more educated and they're traveling and they're exposing the, the, they are exposing the world, they start to realize, yes, there's, it's, a, it's an interesting industrial. But there's a long way to go, but we're working very hard to increase the number of UAE nationals. Yeah. We've only got a few more minutes to go. I, yeah. I'm interested in knowing what's changed in the industry since you began, but also what has remained the same, because there are some core principles that are enduring, aren't they? And other things that change beyond recognition. What, in your view, are the, the core principles that don't change, first of all? Uh, customers, behaviors. Uh, customer services, meeting and greetings, that's a basic work of hospitality which we need to continue to give them. A great service, a personal service, these are very important. I think technology has moved the hotel dramatically in a different directions, whether it's a reservations or yield management or technology in the room and everything. These are dramatically changed. However, still customers like to be seen face to face, customers like to be called by name, customers need to be greeted and bid farewell when they leave. And also customers really like to know more and more about the city they are in. Where are they? You know, sense of belonging, sense of belonging to that city. And if we hire more UAE nationals, they will be able to express, they will be able to tell more about their city than an expatriate. They, you know, they have a better background, they are belongs to here, they're born here, while the, the, come, the people come from outside, of course they have a knowledge, but their knowledge is rather limited. And, and this is one of the things that we touched on earlier in the, the previous panel, this idea of creating authentic experiences. I think it was Haitham from Ras Al Khaimah said, you go to Ras Al Khaimah and there's an Italian restaurant and a Japanese restaurant. But perhaps the UAE, and it's been so good at doing many things in developing its hotel industry, the trick it's missed so far is creating an authentic Emirati experience, particularly when it comes to, to food and beverage, but in, in many areas as well. What, what more can be done to address that, to take advantage of this? I think if his hotelier continue to discover the UAE's culinary or UAE food, there are some talented ladies, there are some talented men that are around that we need to discover them, bring them, train them a little better, better, and expose them to the markets. Uh, right now in Qatar, Qatar, for example, started to introduce the, a local dish to all of their properties. And this is a great sign, and this is fantastic. And Abu Dhabi did it in Emirates Tower, and Jumeirah is just starting, but it's again, it's the beginning of the time, but uh, we need to discover there are lots of dish. I remember when I went to uh, Bali, and many, many years ago, the food, the Balinese food is not very presentable, <laughs> but some <laughs> French or Australian young chef went in early 80s, and they really modernized the food. They did a fusion, or they did a better presentation, and today, every restaurant in Bali, you see lots of palatable, presentable Balinese food. And there's no reason why we could not do that here. Hey, I'm from Manchester in the north of yeah. England. We've got terrible food, but there's always someone who can spin it. Fusion, <laughs> yes, tell yeah, a story. Absolutely. <laughs> there's always a way. Uh, final question is this. When, when you started off, there were, was it actually no hotels in the UAE or just a handful of hotels in the UAE? Uh, and now there are more than a thousand. Uh, it's it's it, much more competitive now is the point I'm making. What for you is the big challenge of the next 10 or 20 years for the hotel industry as it becomes increasingly competitive? And what will be the competitive edge or competitive advantage yeah. for hotels going forward? Well, let's talk about when I, when I started. There were some, of course, there were some hotels, some the famous big name, uh, Intercontinental and Hilton were here. But the number of the hotel was very handful. And of course, came 80s and 90s, this that quarter poles and then. 
We have several challenges. The number of people on the front row here are responsible for that explosion <laughs> in hotels, They're I would say. They're all here for explosion. <laughs> the, um, the challenges we will face in future challenge will be a talent. I would, talent will be the major challenge in coming decade. Uh, number two, embracing the technology. Uh, number th third challenge would be to build hotel much more economically, much more purpose hotel rather than just let's build a hotel and run it or flag it with someone. So we need to more customize it, more working on a better target market for the hotel. Well, it's a fascinating story. I'm sure there are many more chapters left to be written. Indeed. Congratulations on becoming winner of the AHIC 2016 Leadership Award, the founder and group CEO of Roy International, Ahmed Ramdan. Thank you. Thank you very, Thank much. Much. Thank you very much indeed. Please take a seat, sir.